So I have here with me Karen Blick. Thank you so much for joining us for Excel 2020. Um, You're welcome. Thank you. And uh, would you like to start by just introducing yourself and telling us your current role in the performance industry? Yes, certainly. My name is Karen Blick and I am an actress, currently a television actress, uh, playing Lydia Hart in ITV's Emmerdale, a role which I've had since July 2016. Brilliant, Karen. And so I wonder if you could start by telling us a little bit about your training or what you did in, in order to be able to do this great role. Yeah, um, I, I did a BTEC many, many moons ago, probably early 90s, it would have been. Uh, I did a BTEC National in Performing Arts at Caldwell College in Halifax. Two brilliant years there, taught by the wonderful Neil Horsfield. Um, we did fantastic plays, we performed in the college, but we also performed at Square Chapel and in venues in and around Halifax and Calderdale. And that was a great, great two years. And during those two years, I really decided I want to be an actor. This is what I want to do. If I can make my living doing this, then that's the dream come true. Um, and Neil was really encouraging. I applied to drama school. Um, I asked him how many I should apply to. And he said, as many as you can afford. Because At that time, it was £25 audition fee. Uh, to apply to drama school. I think it's doubled that now for many of them, which is a lot of money. And, uh, and I didn't come from a family, a wealthy family. Um, so that was a definite barrier um, initially to applying to drama school. So I did, I applied to as many as that I could afford and I applied to other universities as well that didn't charge an audition fee. Um, Aberystwyth, um, whole university places that did um, degrees in theatre or drama that weren't necessarily vocational acting degrees, um, just to find another inroad or another route into the profession. Uh, it was really hard, and the first year of trying, I didn't. I got a few recalls, but I got no offers at all. And I thought this is not what I expected. This is much harder. So. I took a year out and again my tutor at the time said you've got to keep trying because it is really tough industry most people try for like three years Maxine Peake who's an incredibly well-known actress television and stage actress and writer she it took her three years three attempts to get into RADA um, so after one year I was going oh, this is a bit tougher than I expected so I had a year out and then I went back um, to apply and decided acting is probably too hard so I'm not going to do it I'm going to be a teacher instead because that's much easier <laughs> not um, I went back for to see Neil for an, a, a reference for my course and he said just keep going keep trying apply again so I, I made the decision that I wasn't because of my financial situation at the time I wasn't going to pay to audition for drama school so I applied to the ones that I didn't have to pay an audition fee to and one of them was Bretton Hall in, uh, in Yorkshire which was also near my hometown of Bradford um, and I got in, I got a place on the uh, theatre acting devised performance course at Bretton Hall in 1997 and studied there for three years and thoroughly enjoyed it. We did all sorts of experimental theatre, um, learnt things that I'd never kind of come into contact with before. We did nightly things, we did yeah, quite avant-garde stuff as well. A lot of devising, um, reworking of text, reworking of Shakespeare. I really broadened kind of my experience and opinion of theatre and what constitutes a performance. Um, absolutely loved it. Three great years. And graduated in 2000, which dawned on me this year was 20 years ago. <laughs> a flipping heck. Um, 20 years ago uh, this year. And I was fortunate that when I left college, a friend of mine had set up a theatre company and he asked me if, before they advertised and auditioned actors, if I'd like a part in a play, which was um, touring. We got some funding from the Young Farmers Association to do a play about sensible drinking for young people. <laughs> that was my first professional job outside of, of, uh, of college and graduation. Prior to that, actually, before I went to Bretton, I did manage to get a job as a professional actor in Leeds in, uh, in Tetley Brewery War as a museum actor. So I did that for a few months before, um, before going to Bretton, which was great experience as well. Um, and I suppose in those kind of that journey, that 16 years, if you like, from graduating to getting the role in, in Emmerdale, I did lots of different things, lots of small scale touring, lots of TIE, lots of profit share, student films, made my own work when work wasn't forthcoming. So the skills that I learned in my degree, the devising, the producing work, making my own work, really stuck in good stead. 
Great, thank you. And um, in terms of your current job on Emmerdale, I wonder if you could just talk us through the process of um, how you managed to get that, that particular role. I got that through my agent, um, who, I, I, again, back to kind of creating your own opportunities, if you like, in your own work. Um, I hadn't done any professional work for a while, uh, and a friend of mine said, why don't we do an all-female production of Hamlet and touring regionally? Of course, we made no money at all, <laughs> but we worked really, really hard. But off the back of that, I got a new agent, um, uh, which was wonderful. It was great. So if you're in any plays, or you're doing anything, that's the opportunity to write to casting directors, write to agents. So I got a new agent, and she asked me, what, what, where do you want to go career-wise, Karen? What's the dream? What's the ideal role for you right now? And I said, at the time, yes, yeah, so this was 2015, I said, um, I've got two young children. I don't want to tour, and I don't want to do theatre because I want to be at home with my family. So film and television. And that's what we focused on, the two of us together. And within 12 months of, of being with her, I had got a role in a feature film with Sean Bean, which was filmed in Skipton, again, just down the road from where I live. And, and I got an audition for Emmerdale. The first audition I got for Emmerdale was for one episode in, as, a, as a police officer. Uh, and I didn't get it. So I was absolutely gutted because I thought it'd gone really well, but I didn't get it. Um, and then two weeks later, I was called in for another audition for the part of Lydia, and I did get it. And that was for four episodes, so that was a longer, um, longer time in the show. And the, the writers seemed to like my interpretation of the character um, and wanted to write more for her, so I was called back and there were more until in 2017 she became regular. Brilliant. Brilliant. <laughs> Thank you. And you mentioned there about um, having an agent, and that's actually yeah. one of the questions from the students. So could you maybe say about um, any advice that you've got about getting a good agent? Yes. Um, there's, when I, my first agent um, was actually a cooperative agency north of Watford in Hebden Bridge, and that was a great move um, as a young actor starting out because in a cooperative, the actors run the agency. So you decide as a, as a collective what the commission fees are. And it's a cooperative. So in the sense of you give your time or you give your money. So if you are working in the industry, you pay commission and you contribute to the agency in that way. If you're not working in the industry, you staff the office. Um, and the agreement, I think at the time, was three days a month. You would staff the office from 10 to 6. So any other work, bar work or waitressing or any other work that we were doing, to kind of supplement uh, our income in a between acting jobs, we would fit. I would fit around the staffing of the office. And during, I spent five years with that cooperative, and that time I learned an awful lot about the casting process, about how breakdowns come in, how to market yourself as an actor, um, how to approach casting directors, um, admin side of the industry, which was great. So I would really recommend to people at the start of their career or even if you've had a break from acting and you want to come back to it in some way a cooperative agency is a, and there's lots of them about in Manchester uh, North of Watford still going as well in Yorkshire um, is a great way a great inroad to find the, the intricacies sometimes of the industry that you don't see from an actor's perspective normally your, your agent will put you up for a job and you don't see kind of what goes on in the background so I learned a lot from that um, so finding a good agent it's about I love being honest and it's a relationship it's a two-way relationship a lot of actors sometimes are frightened of their agent oh I didn't do that I didn't ask my agent that um, and that's not healthy really like any other relationship it needs to be open and honest and a two-way thing so one of the things with my current agent um, Vicky at Northern Gold she's based just near Sheffield um, I was always really honest with her, saying I cannot go and do long theatre tours, I cannot go and I don't, don't want to because I've got a little family, I can't go to an audition in London with one day's notice and pay £200 for a train to London and back in one day. And she was like, right, yeah, that's good to know. So she was able to work on my behalf for areas of work that she knew I was interested in and wanted to do. And I wasn't kind of getting resentful because I was going for advert auditions that I didn't want to be there for. Or, or, work that I wouldn't be able to take or want to take because I was too scared to be open and honest so write to somebody and in interview don't necessarily say yes straight away right if you're graduating you're about to graduate that's a brilliant time um, to approach agents 
do it as soon as you can in terms of if you're going to be graduating in the summer start now write to them um, and build up relationships and they might not take you on straight away if they say no um, but you might have a relationship with that casting director, with that agent for many many years until they, they might see a gap in their books and they say I know what to do with you now I know how to market you and I know how to move your career on because again lots of actors can work find their own work for many years I, after graduation I think it was about five years four or five years I represented myself I put myself up for auditions um, for a long a long time so finding somebody who you can have an open and honest dialogue and who you feel they understand what the work that I want to do and if you're not sure have a look on the agent's websites and see okay that I, I recognize that actor that performer because I saw them in that play or I've seen them in that show and, and start aim high start with big big guns and then work your way down that's what I would say until you get a yes because <laughs> you never know you might luckily your CV your showreel might land on somebody's mat and they say do you know what I needed somebody just like that because actors do move they progress around they or they give up and then that agents have a gap in their books so you might just be the gap that they age bracket or the casting type that they're looking for great thank you Karen um, and lots of our performers obviously are trained mostly to work on the stage um, and in theatre. Mm -hmm. So I wondered if you could talk us through, so um, is the process of preparing yourself to be on camera, in front of camera, very different from uh, the preparation you might take to be, um, to go into a theatre piece? Yes, definitely. I think the biggest difference is rehearsals. At the, on, in um, Emmerdale in particular, and I know in other soaps and continuing dramas, we have very little rehearsal so we get our script two weeks before shooting usually read the script any concerns or comments or feedback we communicate with the office um, and then we learn it in our own time so you learn your script and then we turn up we block the director will have maybe one two read-throughs um, and then we'll block the scene and then you'll shoot it so it's whereas in a play or in theatre you, you have your read-through you have all that luxury of how many weeks rehearsals and going over things so it's a very very different process um so how i it the, we have to work a lot quicker i think uh, and make decisions strong decisions about your character or about a scene very quickly and kind of go with I was speaking to somebody on a zoom call yesterday about this how they were asking how i approach a script or a scene and i usually read it 10 times because then by the 10th time you get the this is what this scene is about you think it's about an argument about x but actually it's about y and these are their wants and needs underneath and once you know that then you can play uh, play the truth of the meaning of that scene but the stage yes the luxury of rehearsals so enjoy your rehearsals <laughs> as frustrated as they can be at times they are a luxury <laughs> Okay, great. And could you, maybe you could tell us some of your uh, top professional tips, because obviously we're often encouraging students to develop their professional skills as well as their acting skills, but how important do you think it is to remain kind of professional and what would be very, Yeah, very. We are a business. Um, I remember attending a lecture and a, and a tutor said, this is show business. It's not show show. <laughs> You've got to get the business side of it right. Um, and that's something that really stayed with me. Um, so operating professionally and seeing yourself um, as, a, as a, a one person business. So your headshots, your CV, how you communicate on social media as well. I think this is something that is quite a new thing. Um, you, you don't realize sometimes maybe when you send a tweet or you put something on Facebook, that is out there for everybody to see. So as you're a young person, you're in training, um, you know, kind of tweeting, I'm down the pub, or oh, missed lectures today, or certain things like that, that may seem funny in that moment, you think five years down the line, a casting director or an agent or somebody's looking at you and they think, what picture are they building of this person? So be conscious of your social media profile. What does it say about you? And some things you can keep private, you know, Facebook and things like that, but there are ways and means that, um, that these things come out, especially if you become commercially successful in film or television, people start digging for these for this dirt. What have they said? What have they done? And, and you know, a bad and misplaced tweet um, it can really it's cost people, especially young performers. It's cost them a career. 
So I think my biggest piece of advice is to be conscious of your, your, your persona in the virtual world, in social media, how, what are you tweeting about, how are you presenting yourself, because that has a massive audience. And a lot of companies, not just in acting, but a lot of companies will check out people's social media profiles to see what sort of things that they're tweeting, what, what does that tell us about that individual. Um, and don't be afraid to put yourself out there as well. I think sometimes you, as an actor, you think, oh gosh, we, we all suffer from insecurities and we worry about, is that show real good? Is that piece of material good enough to show people? Should I invite people to my performance? Should I put that out into the world, this monologue that I've created or this piece of work? My advice would be yes, do it, um, because you will only learn from it and it shows that, you are proact that you're proactive um, and be the sort of actor that you would want to work with. Who would I, if I'm creating a theatre company or if I'm making a TV series, a web series, who do I want to work with? I want to work with people who are motivated, full of ideas, who can work with others. So what, those sorts of things really, really come in handy. Um, and kind of those voices in your head saying, oh, I can't do that because it's not good enough. Kind of, you have to push them to one side a lot of the time, especially in, in acting and, and in this profession, because there are so many people who want to do it. It's such an overcrowded profession, but there, is, there are so many opportunities. And telling, reminding yourself that actually there is nobody else like you. You can fill a casting bracket somewhere. Every, all of us in, in the profession have got something that we can bring that is unique and that nobody else could do. A way that we would perform a character or a certain trait, whether it's our accent or how we look. Uh, you know, it's not about looking for the perfect um, physique or the perfect look. Not, casting directors don't look for the like, model types, if you like. There might be some roles like that, but they want to cast real people with real life experience and stories to tell. And, and you know, that's you creating your work. Get yourself out there and tell people, show people what you're about. Great, thank you. And um, I imagine that because you're in Emmerdale, it's a really popular soap that um, people would often recognize you. Um, and the students wanted to know, how do you deal with that kind of public interaction? Yeah, it's really strange, especially when you've been an actor for a long time and you've done the job in other areas and then all of a sudden, like you say, there's so many people who watch the show. At first it was really exciting. I mean, it still is. It's exciting. It's strange. You get a buzz and you think, gosh, it feels like all those years of hard work. And, um, and I'm just polite, really. People usually approach it because they are the fans of the show, they're excited or they like the character. And, I, you know, say hand on heart, the interactions I've had with people uh, out and about whether it's in the supermarket or you know on the high street have been positive people just want to connect with you in some way and say I love the show or I love the character so just giving people a little bit of time it's hard sometimes when I'm with my children because if we're out and about they, t they tend to get a bit bored my daughter says why I don't understand why people want your photograph why does anyone want a selfie with you and so <laughs> I can't fathom it um, <laughs> but it's fun and it's a privilege. I, den I genuinely see it as a privilege, um, and that helps. And the and most the Emmerdale fans just love the show, so it's exciting. It's, it's like when you see somebody famous. I remember years ago, I saw Jack D in London. He was coming out of a lift, the comedian Jack D, and I was about to go in, and I thought I knew him. And I went, "Oh, hello, <laughs> hello." And we kind of had a chat, and then he walked in. And I thought, "I don't know him. It's Jack D," <laughs> but he was very polite and pleasant, and didn't kind of go, "Who are you?" So, <laughs> Great, thank you. And um, I've got a good question, I think, from our employability officer. She says, what's the best mistake you've ever made? Oh, that is a good question. The best, the best mistake I've ever made. I think it was creating the character of Lydia, if you like. Um, when I got the script, I read the script inside out, prepared, and I thought, this character is comedic. There's so much comedy. There's, and uh, I prepared it like that. And then when I went for my audition, the director said to me, um, there's no comedy in this. <laughs> went to the, there's no comedy. She's a genuine counsellor. She's not flirting with Jimmy. And it was the exact opposite of what I had prepared. And I thought, OK, I'll just play her really straight. OK, maybe I've got this wrong. And then when I got the part on the first day of filming, the director said, forget everything I said. Play her really daft. And flirt with Jimmy and that's what I'd actually prepared originally so if that could be 
a mistake, if you like, that would definitely be. I was glad I'd made the mistake <laughs> of, of viewing the character like that because then she just blossomed, really. And I think that's um, why viewers took to her and the writers so we can we can write some um, interesting stuff for this character. Wow, that's a great story. <laughs> okay, great. Um, and. So last kind of two questions for you. Um, I wondered if you could say what's, what's the best and the worst part of your job as an actor? The best part, the best part is being able to make a living by doing something I really, really enjoy and I've enjoyed from being a child. Um, and there are days sometimes where I pinch myself filming in the village or we're in studio and I'm in the wool pack and I think, look at this, this is my job, this is what I'm doing to pay the bills this is fantastic um and you get to meet really interesting people you get you, you're invited to do and, and participate in interesting and exciting things that's great i think the worst part would be the uncertainty of it and it's a t really tough tough profession um to keep going you know in, in, when there are many times over the last 20 years where i've thought i need to give this up this is too hard i need to do something that's a bit more stable um, uh, and you know protect my mental health and everything else because you worry how long will this last what will be the next job so i've learned to live more in the moment and enjoy what is happening and um, control what i can so do my job to my best of my abilities prepare um and then if you know the nature of things do change that when they do a, if they do you become more adaptable and able to transfer those skills then onto the next role or the next job but the uncertainty of it and that's i think why a lot of actors give up is because it becomes difficult when you you feel that nothing is in your control with regards to your career as an actor a lot of the time you might be waiting for the phone to ring you're waiting to hear back from an audition um you, know, you go to medical school and train for five years at the end of that you pretty much guarantee you're going to be a doctor you can go and spend two years doing a BTEC national, three years doing a degree, five years training. Will you be working in the industry? The great thing is there are way, there are so many more opportunities within the performing arts and lots of different introductions from actors, writers, directors, producers, assistant directors. It's, you know, it's a multi-billion pound industry that, that we are in. But I think for acting in particular, the uncertainty can when you want to gain, grab some control back of your life and think, right, I need, to, need some certainty here, so what will I do? Uh, and at times like that, I, I, I control what I can, I influence what I can. So if I get an audition, I can learn my lines and I can be prepared. I can control that. I can't control whether the casting director says yay or nay, or whether I'm right for the role, but I can prepare appropriately. So it's managing those things that you can control. And if it stops being fun and you stop enjoying it, go and do something else for a bit. You might come back to it or you might find another fantastic career that actually is, is, is you know, more suited to you or you feel that actually performing arts training that I've had have led me to this point and now I feel able to do this job or, um, but if you really want to be an actor and performer, there, is, there shouldn't be anything stopping you. Um, and especially in the north of England currently, there are lots of opportunities in film, in television, our regional theatre, the Leeds Playhouse, just had a massive resurgence as well. There's a great theatre space, um, studio space there, and they're creating and producing some some exciting pieces of work. Brilliant! Thank you so much for your time, Karen. Welcome. I hope I've answered the questions and not gone too rambly and kind of off. No. <laughs> really really useful it's really useful to get your insight into you know your own experience um and just to you know give these young people a guide as to you know how they should go about it and how they should think about it i think that's really useful thing. yeah and thinking about that end if, if you're thinking all right i want to be in hollyoaks or i want to work at the national theater whatever it is there is a path there there are a series of steps that you can take rather than just kind of writing it off and thinking oh do you know what no i can't because actually you'd be surprised yeah. yeah good luck everybody thank you thanks karen you're welcome thank you